I like talking trash. It's gotten me in trouble. I've had my nose broken before. I talk a lot of trash when I play basketball. Even when I played soccer, I was a goalkeeper, and I enjoyed talking trash. I'd learn Spanish to speak to the people that were trying to speak in Spanish around me, and then they would say really mad words in Spanish to me, which I had learned because I was paying attention to it. Just a few words. Just enough. I can't speak Spanish at all. Definitely have lost it now. But I always enjoyed the art of it. I found talking trash to be an important and valuable part of the game. For some people, it helps them elevate their game. For other people, it, it makes it harder on them. You know, it distracts, takes away their focus. And you kind of figure out which one you're messing with at the particular time. And Trent Alexander-Arnold has decided to wade into the great art of talking trash. And he's decided to do it in a public way. He's also decided to do it in a bit of a strange way. Trent Alexander-Arnold has given me weird feelings. I'm not a Liverpool fan, and I'm not talking about me thinking Trent Alexander-Arnold is particularly attractive. No, stay focused. We're talking about whether Liverpool is actually adopting something relating to a small club mentality. We'll break that down. I'm not I'm not sure. I, I honestly am starting this video. I still haven't even decided exactly how I feel about this. I need to read the quotes again. And what we're going to do is, of course, read the quotes together, because why the hell do you think we're here in the first place? Trent Alexander-Arnold sits down and what ended up being an exclusive interview with, I think, 442 or 443 or whatever. Um... And it was, it, what, what, what did he say here? Let's see if I can find it. Uh, he's talking about Manchester City. So he's obviously been on Liverpool, you know, since he was like two years old, basically. But he's been on Liverpool and the senior team for the whole time they've been battling City in this era. It's tough. We're up against a machine that's built to win. That's the simplest way to describe City and their organization. He said, looking back on this era, although they've won more titles than us and have probably been more successful, our trophies will mean more to us and our fan base because of the situations of both clubs financially. Now, the first time I heard this, I was thinking this is a very similar argument to the one you'd hear from like West Ham winning a European trophy that, yeah, they won a smaller European trophy than a lot of other teams in England or in Europe happen to win, but it means more to them because they, you know, be, uh, quite frankly, for this exact reason, I mean more to us and our fan base because of the situations of both clubs and financially. But I also know that there's a backdrop of the fact that Manchester City's broken basically every FFP rule possible. Now, I made a video about this, so I'm more well-versed than the average internet idiot, although I still count myself among the internet idiots. Stay strong out there, people. Uh, I did make a video about it, and most of the violations came from inflating their income. Basically, Manchester City does not make as much money as Manchester United or Liverpool or uh, even Tottenham, honestly. And because they don't make as much money, under FFP, they wouldn't be able to spend as much money, which I actually think is a bit of a silly rule, but that's neither here nor there. So what uh, Manchester City did, and most the vast majority of its FFP violations inflated its income from various instances. And the reason that it has so many violations is it was like, you know, well, this particular match, they overinflated how much that they made from match day sales. Or this particular sponsorship, they overinflated the price because it's a sponsorship from something else that the owners of the club also happen to own. Right? Like they inflated the income of the club so that they could spend at the same level as the clubs they were competing against. Or in some cases, and basically most cases, they were able to spend a little bit more than everybody else was able to spend. And then Todd Bully came in and was like, have you ever heard of eight-year contracts? And all of that nonsense went out the window. But that is the backdrop to what Trent Alexander-Arnold is like trying to say here. How both clubs have built their teams, the manner in which we've done it probably means more to our fans. That is the least small club approach in any of the things that he's saying. Because what he's going at here is that Manchester City is essentially a fake club. And the, the concept that Manchester City is propped up by an oil state, and that's the reason that they are able to succeed. Now, I do, I always have to include this when I talk about this topic. I don't blame Manchester City fans. Manchester City was a strong, healthy, rapscallion-type club that existed for a long time. They were, you know, they were way less successful than Everton, but so pardon the comparison, but they were the Everton to the Liverpool to United, right? They were the the more local a uh, smaller cousin to the larger, more international brand in, in Liverpool in that case. But again, Everton was way more successful than Manchester City was up until the point that it was purchased by an oil state. And so Manchester City, I the fans themselves, I always make sure never to really go after them because they basically just 
tripped and fell into a pot of gold here. This is the idyllic situation where your club that had won one trophy or whatever in 50 years gets bought by an oil state and all of a sudden you're competing for champions leagues, right? But as a result, there isn't the buildup over time of tons of international support, right? Even Chelsea, uh, which was able to you know, explode in a sense about 15 years earlier, well, Chel uh, 10 years earlier, actually, Chelsea was able to build up a bigger kind of international audience because it was in from the beginning on the FIFA video games and everything. And, P you know, in the boom in the United States and in India and in China, where people were picking fan being a fan of teams, Chelsea was in that collection. And honestly, when I was growing up, I didn't know that Chelsea was a club that had been kind of elevated by Roman Abramovich into the air of a Manchester United, where it was Manchester United and Liverpool and Arsenal kind of all beating each other up back in the annals of history. We have branched off into deep philosophical discussions of like where the big clubs in the Premier League came from. But the point is, there are six of them with Newcastle trying to make it seven and Manchester City being one of those is being hinted at as a fake club. Now, I don't think Manchester City is a fake club, but I think there is the result that when you win trophies, each individual trophy has less of an impact. I think everybody can acknowledge that. Like, a Champions League doesn't mean as much to Real Madrid as it would mean to Leicester City, right? Like they, That's very, very obvious. And Manchester City wins everything. They win everything all the time. But I do think the treble was special. And Trent Alexander-Arnold did not shout this into a void. There's a response. Erling Holland, the human AI sentient robot goal scoring machine, was asked about this in an interview. And we have his response. No way. Yes way. This is on Sky Sports. I'm reported. Like I just muted. So here's a guy asking him the question. Interview this week, it's been reported that Trent Alexander Arnold has said this about Manchester City. Looking back on this era, although they've won more titles than us and have probably been more successful, our trophies mean more to us and to our fan base because of the situations at both clubs financially, how both clubs have built their teams and the manner in which we... You can see this is where Erling Holland starts to show his cards for the first time. The manner in which we've done is right here. He kind of furrows his brow and he's like, really? Really, Trent? Because it's not like Liverpool's not spending a lot of money, right? Liverpool and Manchester City, to the credit of both of those clubs, spend money really intelligently. There's no Antonys on either of those teams right now, you know what I mean? How both clubs have built their teams and the manner in which we've done it. Probably He's like, huh? More to huh. Fans. What do you make of those comments? What do you make of it, Erling? If you want to say that, okay. Uh, I've been here one year and I... Uh, Won the treble and um, it was quite a nice feeling. I don't think he knows uh, exactly this feeling, so. Nice, nice, dude, yes! Oh, this is such wonderful trash talk, oh. I mean, this is the obvious comeback, though. This is the, like, if you ever survived a schoolyard, but right, if you reach the level of Erling Holland, you at least have these sorts of comebacks kind of floating around in your head where you're like, yeah, well, you wouldn't be saying that if you knew what it was like to win the treble, right? They are one of the two English teams ever to win the treble. The other one's right down the road in Manchester United. Doesn't look like they're going to do it anytime soon, right? Manchester City might get yeeted into the sun because of its hundred plus violations of FFP in a year. But they did, you know, on the field, win the treble. And, and so that is excellent ammunition to fire back. And this is where... Uh, Erling Holland's like too much of a robot, though, because that's basically all you get. So, uh, so yeah, that's what I felt last season. It was quite nice. So, so yeah, the rivalry. It's like, dude, I. Uh, he's very pleased with himself. He's very, very pleased with himself, and then he's like, "I got to get out of this as fast as possible. I don't want to give." Too much bulletin board material. I just want to provide the facts and move on. But he wasn't done. Board. The, the reporter, to their credit, was like, I'm going to push a little more because that wasn't enough of an answer. But it being a special game, comments like that, when opposition players are talking about your team, your club, does it make it a bit more spicy when it comes to these Ooh! Give me that jaw action again. He's like, when yo, what you... About your team, your club, does it make it a bit more spicy when it comes to these games then? Well, they can talk as much as they want or he can talk as much as he want. Uh... I don't know why it does that, but uh, I don't mind. 
He does mind, but I think he does mind in a good way. I think this is one of those, this match is going to be freaking awesome, right? Because they play this weekend. I think it's this weekend. Kind of want to make sure now, but I, I believe they play this weekend and that is going to be absolutely electric. Yeah, they do play on Sunday. Okay. So because I mean they play this weekend, it's going to be freaking awesome because that <laughs> I don't know why he does that is just such a fantastic line because it's a, I I mean I would have thought that Trent was in the same category as Erling Holland that he would have never said something like this publicly, but he came out and 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 stirred the pot. He decided to poke the beast and stir the pot. And I tell you what, if Liverpool comes out and beats Manchester City, they backed it up and they look great. And if they come out and get smacked and lose by like lose to Manchester City, then you come out of it going, why did you poke the bear, right? Why did you have to light a fire under Erling Holland who just locks himself in a cryogenic chamber 10 hours a day to like be there as a goal scoring machine when he needs to be? And I'm sure you've poked the rest of the team as well. Because regardless of what's happening financially behind the scenes, right, I... Uh, I I mean, Erling Holland is not particularly involved in that. Kevin De Bruyne is not particularly involved in that. If they are going to, you know, tag and bag some guys that have been absolutely crushing, you know, rules basically in the the front office of Manchester City, that might be around the corner. But at the end of the day, we're going to kick a match off where there's 11 dudes on the field on each side and one famous coach on each side, and you just have to play the game. And Manchester City does that really well and turns into a machine as Trent Alexander-Arnold uh, it points out at some point in this interview uh, from the turn of the year city switch it on and it's difficult machine to stop well that machine is on now in manchester city i, I get asked on stream all the time like who do i think is going to win and i'm like manchester city wins it every year right they lost it one year that year was interrupted by covid to be fair liverpool was going to win anyways i'm not saying they weren't but it was definitely it, it was a weird year where they didn't have the chance to switch on and make it as close as it might have been i think liverpool wins it comfortably either way because they were so far ahead they were like what out 15 points ahead going into COVID or whatever but the manchester city this is what they do right this is closing time right we're getting into the last 10 11 matches this is when the best team wins this is when the cream rises to the top and until they get sent to the national league for breaking 100 plus rules why are you poking them and why are you also admitting that in the dressing room, there's kind of like a small, I, I said I wasn't decided on it before. I'm decided now. There's a bit of a small club move here, right? Like I get the point that he's trying to make, but you're Liverpool. You are Liverpool, right? There are a handful of clubs on the planet with a better history than you, right? Like you, you, you are, you, you Liverpool, you've got a billionaire owner, right? <laughs> Obviously, they have a billion billionaire owner, but you have a billionaire owner as well, and you, you spend a ton of money on players, and you have some of the best players in the world, and you should be able to beat everybody too. So, you know, I, I think that you you want to be the team that other teams are saying this about, and Liverpool's had an unbelievable run. But this ends up coming off looking weird, and if I'm going to score this trash-talking contest, I'm going to go 60% Erling Holland, 40% Trent. When you start it, you got to stick the landing. He started it, gave off a bit of a weird vibe. Erling Holland stuck the landing with a nice, you know, jab to set it up with the, uh, he doesn't know that feeling of winning the treble. And then uh, I don't know why he's talking that much uppercut to knock him out. So I think Erling Holland got the best of this round, but it just makes me want to watch the weekend even more, honestly. I hope you guys are able to catch it. I'll see you guys on stream.